Okay, so you see the subtitle uh, in tree sequence is a, a temporal interpretation <clears throat> compatible with classical mathematics. Okay, uh, so, um, okay, uh, now, um, all right. So as I said, Brower's intuitionism had various features and motivation. The most important one was the reduction of non-constructive arguments, which according to him, necessitated a new interpretation of the syntactic logical consequent constants. Um, most famously, the interpretations of negation, uh, disjunction and negation, implying a rejection of the law of excluded middle. Okay, and the constructive interpretation of existential quantification, denying that an existential statement can be proved without, in principle, being able to provide an instant. Um, as to Dummert is rightly stressed, one has to really um, uh, accept this in principle here, since uh, we often can't really do it, even in intuitionism, without, um, um, you know, impossibly long computations or whatever, right? Okay, now, um, uh, now, now eventually, though this took time, most mathematicians, I think this is a fair statement about the mathematical world, um, simply ignored the Browerian criticisms and developed classical mathematics as before. Um, certainly, you know, when I was experiencing the subject myself, which was a while ago, it was certainly true, I think it's still true. Um, now, there was a time when this was a very live issue, right? And as everyone uh, knows in insight, in fact, is here for, is clear from uh, the presentations given here. Brower himself did famous work that was only classically valid, right? Okay. Interest in intuition is alive for many of us here, even if we do not reject classical mathematics. Okay, now, um, another feature of Brower's work uh, came later. In addition to the determinate or law-like sequences, he proposed that free choice sequences be involved. Right? Okay. Now, as Heiding says, one does not really need to be supposed that an infinitely preceding sequence be determined by a law. The question how the components of sequence are successively determined, whether by a law, by free choices, throwing a die, or whatever means <clears throat> is entirely irrelevant. Now, this newer aspect of his work has, um, <coughs> to some extent anyway, a more difficult history. Now, uh, and I quote Eric Bishop, a relatively late admirer of Bauer's constructivism, uh, and he categorically rejected the notion of a free choice sequence. He says, in Brower's case, there seems to have been a nagging suspicion that unless he personally intervened to prevent it, the continuum would turn out to be discreet. Um, he therefore introduced the net method of free choice sequences for constructing the continuum, as a consequence of which the continuum cannot be discreet because it is not well enough defined. Um, uh, this makes mathematics so bizarre it becomes unpalatable um, to mathematicians and for to whom the whole work of Brower's program. This is a pity because Brower had a remarkable insight into the defects of classical mathematics, and he made a heroic attempt to set things right. Okay. So, uh, found the Bishop's book, okay, right, uh, and I, I say he, the, the similar sentence, he's sarcasm often occurs in his work on foundational <laughs> issues, okay, right, okay. Um, now, Bishop's real numbers, or sequences of rationals defining them, are given by effective rules, right? Okay, now, 
I mentioned Martin Luther's intuitionistic type theory and the homotype theory that developed from it. Um, and they uh, appear not to use the concept of free choice sequence either. They are, these are major applications of intuitionistic ideas, the foundations of mathematics and with connections to theoretical computer science. Now, um, and then I mention even the subplot who's sympathetic to free choice sequence have tried to show they can be extended away as sort of façon de parler, using axioms of open data or analytic sigma 1-1 data to reduce discourse about them to talk of constructive functions. So uh, I'm not necessarily against such things, but I do not regard it as important for getting rid of fundamental concepts, and they will play no role here because I am not going to be a constructivist here. Uh, the notion of free choice as the outcome choose is completely different from that which motivated these proposals since it's supposed to supplement classical mathematics, not intuitionistic mathematics conceived as based on the idea of constructivism. So in this talk, I shall outline how a concept of free choice sequence could be confined with an acceptance of classical mathematics. So I don't wish to identify classical mathematics with any particular axiomization, such as ZFC, although one could do something like that if one wants. You to choose that most mathematicians uh, this work in the set theory itself probably got things in terms of particular sets of languages or, or, even langu or even language that apply a set theoretic concepts intuitively. Okay. Um, now, category theory is, of course, an important part of contemporary classical mathematics. We don't know the uh, need to go into the re issues about its relation or lack of it to set theory. That is somewhat uh, problematic in itself, see, right? Um, but, um, uh, and intuitionism can play some role in uh, category theory. That's not too important here. Okay. It would be in consonant of Bauer's own attitude towards instant mathematics and also its introduction in uh, Heidegger's book and Dummett's book simply to give the theorems intuitively and not rely on an axiomatization. And uh, Bauer did not like formalism, though lots of us, including me, have been interested in formalizing his stuff, right? But um, I doubt, um, and I think this is true of much of uh, classical mathematics also, that is, that they don't like uh, anything. Okay, right. Um, now, consider a classical mathematician confronted with time. Here we think of time as represented by discrete, linearly ordered moments. Um, well, I think um, it was just Professor Van Adams talk mentioned the satellite idealizations involved, like in the Turing machine. Okay, in the uh, other words, with the order of the positive integers, so this was Brower's conception is given in this notion of free choice sequence. Um, we presume the instance of time were given only as a potential totality. There is no end of time from which all the instances of time can be surveyed. Now, this is what plays the role for intuitionism in place of a constructive idea. See, right, that is. No, uh, there is no such thing as the end of time in which everything becomes true. Right. So the creative subject, or maybe I should have said creating subject, was probably better. And who chose, who chooses the free choice sequences must be assumed to be immortal, even when the sequence is determined by a machine. So a coin casting a die, it must be assumed to be a perpetual motion machine. Right. Right. Okay. On the other hand, okay, there are many scientific models in which there is an end of time, even for a given subject. I mean, uh, people have talked about such models of general relativity and so on, right? Okay, so I don't think take such things into account here. 
nor do I worry about absent simultaneity and special relativity because everything can be assumed the proper time of a single subject, perhaps Brower himself were the immortal. Okay. Um, okay. Now I think uh, Brower and the term classical continuum for the continuum before free choice sequences held that the continuum is given by free choice sequences is an extension of it. So uh, then the term classical continuum would be that given by law-like sequences so, uh, satisfying the usual con convergence conditions or it might be the continuum as a whole taken as primitive and not as uh, consisting of points, which is um, also a great idea. I think that I, yeah. Okay, now, in the conception I have here, right, um, uh, the classical continuum simply consists of arbitrary real numbers defined in one of the usual classical ways. You know, Cauchy sequence said it can cut. Um, as the mathematics is usually the uh, usual classical mathematics. The reals determined by free choice sequences are an important extension in this model of the classical continuum. Okay. Um, here, however, we are considering sequences of natural numbers and arbitrary such sequences or uh, arbitrary uh, sequences with an upper bound condition like sequences, uh, you know, of numbers less than or equal to five or so if they were less than or equal to two. So one can consider a coin flipped independently an arbitrary number of time. This might correspond to a lawless sequence. The number of possibilities most are naturally represented as a tree with the topology of the Cantor set. I'm using the term tree rather than spread to emphasize that this is classical. It doesn't matter too much, right, what one says, right. Okay, now, no doubt this is a simple example of fan in the intuitionistic sense. Okay, other finitary trees or spreads could be given representing possibilities for what the sequence by me, but never stating which branch corresponds to the real one. That is, that is, that is the uh, trouble here now. Part was pretty far theorem, and if the fan theorem is given a rise to a certain amount of concept, comment, and has some difficulty in intuitionistic mathematics, um, and once again, Bishop, who's the most hostile person who has to accept Brower's argument as a proof, would destroy the character of mathematics. Um, it, um, have, but he acknowledged that these theorems have never been counterexampled, and so hence we have a tantalizing situation. We never have proof or a counterexample. Now, um, but even more sympathetic or authors have regarded Brower's arguments as problematic and may simply take them as axioms. They may connect them to cut elimination arguments, which uh, of course would not have been in his head. Um, now, um, uh, now, um, now, in the present case, there's no difficulty about the fan theorem, uh, which is crucial to the result that a continuous function that closed interval is uniformly continuous, and uh, the many other related such theorems, right? Um, since the mathematics are tree with it, most finite branching, where every branch has finite length, a fan is classical, Koenig's infinity lemma holds, and hence the fan theorem holds by the classical argument, right? Okay, so, uh, so it is true, and there's no difficulty about it, or the bar theorem, okay, which is important, to, but less used in, okay, anyway, now. So, uh, let me give an example, though, why, even though one accepts classical mathematics, the law of excluded middle will fail for infinitely preceding sequences, that is, choice sequences, in the present conception, right? For example, if the terms of the sequence are bounded and are identified with the digits of a real number in the unit interval, expanded to an appropriate base, right? Okay. We cannot assert at any time that the number is algebraic or transcendental, right? 
Uh, and not only we cannot assert it, it just isn't true at any time, and there is no such thing as an end of time. See, right? Okay, right? Okay, now, uh, and probabilistic considerations cannot be used. I mean, there is a probability, even if it's given by random throws of a coin or a die. I mean, there is a probability of zero that it will be algebraic if one were allowed to use these things. But um, that doesn't really mean it can't be algebraic. Right. Okay, now, um, uh, okay, now, um, uh, okay, now, of course, intuitionistic right, mathematics we say, re rejects that real numbers always have a decimal expansion, but that isn't um, relevant here. Okay, all right, now. Um, uh, that is it's still true in these feature sequences, but I'm mean, here I am just uh, considering expansions to base. Okay, now, we are really considering here a family of models depending on what restrictions are being placed in the free choice sequences assumed to be a sequence of natural numbers. If there is a bound on the numbers allowed, this will be reflected in the numbers of the branching of a tree. I guess I said this. Now, it is, however, assumed that any classical sequence subject to upper bound restrictions, if there is one, is an allowable one in a temporal path. The creating subject is allowed to choose according to any temporal possible, temporally possible sequence. Okay, now, um, so uh, clarifying one point here. Ideally, I would like to include all classically admissible sequences in those chosen by the creating subject, right? However, these will be non denumerable in number, right? And maybe this is too much of an idealization. Uh, a single creating subject can choose any denumeral number of sequences simultaneously simply by alternating his activities from one to another according to some plan, right? Um, but an uncountable totality of sequences cannot be done in this manner, right? So, um, so, uh, so one might then more weakly postulate that all definable sequences, um, whatever their language, used may be here, right, um, or to be included in those chosen by the creating subject. And these, of course, could be denumerable in cardinality given a particular choice. As I think what the language should be, right? Now, but it will include all those sequences intuitively thought to be uh, classically definable, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, it's important to allow all definable sequences since we want all classically definable reals to be included in the model, right? Okay, now, now note that this in conception here, there is no analog of Trollster's paradox, or really, it's the Richard paradox, so to speak, right? Is what I should say. Um, uh, just taken straight, since uh, uh, the you know, only countably members of the continuum are included in a particular language, and we can define metatheoretically, right, a diagonal the number, right? Uh, that's uh, the Richard paradox, and that uh, is another subject, of course, to talk about. But um, you don't have to talk about it here, right? Now, all the sequences with any given Initial segment included, um, as well as sequences with restrictions added by one or more free decisions, which need not be effective. Of course, like so, I might um, uh, assume a, a sequence in which the odd uh, uh, choices are at random, but the even ones correspond. Well, there is an analog to a sort of classification uh, of free choice sequences given in John Moskovakis' paper, but um, we don't need any sort of low like notions of the even ones can be an indefinable one, you see, right, right? Okay, and whatever, right? 
Okay. Um, uh, now, uh, so for Alpha, there exists an X continuity holder, at least for uh, all Alpha, there is a unique X continuity, but not for all Alpha. There is a beta continuity given Kripke schema. Someone in the break said he will give me a paper challenging Kripke schema altogether, and, uh, and that it's not compatible with Farrell. Well, I haven't read it. Okay, right. Okay. Um, uh, now, um, uh, and um, now, here there is no particular effectiveness idea, just definability. Okay. Um, now, uh, what about, again, the law of excluded middle and its failure on the present conception? We're assuming a model with branching time, but no one knows which branch is actual, right? Nor it is ever true, you see, right? And at any even time, which branch is actual, right? Okay, right? I mean, it's not really just a matter of knowledge. Okay, now. Where does the failure of excluded middle set in? Now, according to one reason, reading of Aristotle's De Interpretatione, and my inter impression is that for a long time it was the received reading, though it has since been challenged, isn't it? Jesus, Aristotle. The um, failure sets in at the very outset. Um, in this reading, no one can say either that there will be a sea battle tomorrow or there will not, since the future is indeterminate, right? So it, it, one would change the example to correspond with uh, free choice sequences. So the value sequence could depend on whether there will be a sea battle tomorrow, right? Um, now, um, the, uh, the idea is clear enough. In this model, the idea of branching time, the idea of the branching time model consists essentially in teaching, treating it with the semantics of Kripke models. A disjunction is true at a point if and only if one disjunct is, right? Now, um, the motivation is different from the one I originally gave for Josh models. Um, the original idea was that a point and a branch represents uh, 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 represents an evidential situation, and, or the points represent an evidential situation, later points represent situations in which one gets more evidence. Right? Okay, um, now when we re remain stuck at a single point for an arbitrary long time, only if one gets one more, ev more evidence can we assert a disjunction without being able to assert a given disjunct. Okay, now. Um, this might correspond reasonably well to the intuitionistic idea that proving a disjunction amounts to having a method to prove at least one of the disjuncts, right? Now, on the Aristotelian model, the idea, however, is different. Since the nodes of the tree represent points in time, where later times represent later points, right? Law of excludal middle fails simply because the future is not determined, though if one waits until the next day, one will know which disjunct is true, right? Okay, now, um, uh, and it will be the case which disjunct is true. Now, this might be a view, but it does not, I don't think it so well corresponds with our intuitions about free choice sequences, even in this classical uh, sense, you see, right? Um, if we can wait and see in some finite time which of two disjuncts is true, here, especially for the law of excluded middle, then one can assert it in advance, I would be inclined to think. In Aristotle's example, there will really be this evil tomorrow, or there will not. We have to wait till tomorrow to see which is true. So putting things more differently, if there is a bar on the branching time tree, so that any branch along it will decide between two disjuncts eventually, and the disjunct can be asserted in advance, though we have to wait a bit to see which one holds, right? Okay, now this means the semantics corresponds to bet models, and this is especially uh, good if the time is finite branching, so it's fan, right? So then there would be an upper bound on the length of the branch, right? Okay, right? 
Okay, now, um, so here we uh, assume the semantics of the connective free choice sequence to be given in terms of met models. Otherwise, continue to take the underlying mathematics to be classical. Okay, now the idea is that the ordinary classical continuum is supplemented by one given in terms of Bowerian free choice sequences um, defined in this way in terms of uh, an indeterminate time, right? Okay, right? Um, now, uh, so for these, the usual tech intuitions in mathematics is used just as in textbooks, such as Hiding and Dummett. Uh, now, I wanted to make one, some comment on the role of Kripke schema in the supplementation. I don't know. Uh, as I say, someone said that uh, Kripke schema should be rejected and it'll send me the paper, but I you know. All right, now look. Uh, uh, now, I originally proposed it in the weak form for all alpha not uh, not a if and only if for all alpha x alpha x equals zero and there exists an x alpha x is not a, if uh, there exists an x alpha x which is different than zero than a but there's a stronger form right which is much simpler right and in the classical model uh, is trivially true right that there is an alpha right a is if and only if there is an alpha x not equal zero. Now, so I was going to make some remarks about my preference for the weak form. Uh, Professor Van Otten's paper already is relevant to this question. Uh, the axiom for the creating subject as he presents it would uh, seem to justify the strong form, right? And, uh, well, there's a careful discussion in Dummett's view about uh, what might justify the different forms. But, look, um, as um, I was following Professor Von Otten's paper, so I don't know, do we, I know other people still have the copies, right? Um, okay. Well, look, uh, what he has is A, if enough, A, double arrow, there exists an X for the, for the creating subject, for there exists an N, a time N with the creating subject proves A. Now, I said that, though, of course, there's got to be a time when it's proved. Well, as Professor Von Otten once said, there might be various generations of the numbers too, but we or the natural numbers, but we think of them as the same, though they're generated at a particular time. And I myself, this is also relevant to uh, Professor Van Otten's paper, would think that the schema he gives, well, he says it's asserted by Bauer himself somewhere. I would have to give, get the reference. I mean, he's not exactly the Pope, uh, so um, I might, I, uh, there's something he says which I think would uh, most widely even interpret ruling out lawless sequences, but they've become widely accepted. Um, uh, um, uh, at any rate, I myself would regard the scheme as justified, and this is relevant to the talk about Markov's principle, with the double negation before a double arrow not not right. There exists an n right such that um, a is proved it n. And even that might have to be taken with a bit of a grain of salt. But um, anyway, that was what might appear to be justified to me, right? And then a similar Markov issue principle arrives here, right? As in uh, what uh, Professor Van Otten himself uh, stressed in connection with this very uh, issue. Okay, right now. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, 
So I therefore feel that I can only justify the weak form that is from a proof of the antecedent one gets a proof of the subject. We have a technique to do this, right? And the proof does not contain within itself a marker for when it is proved, right? Okay, all right. Um, okay, uh, you know, all right, I can uh, skip this slide. Uh, I mean, my already marks, you just have to look at your watch or whatever to see when it's been proved, but still, that's not using just the proof itself, see, right? Okay, right, okay. Go on. It's up here, the BHK interpretation, I don't think. It holds, okay, uh, all right. I have uh, said enough about that, I guess. Okay, now, now, uh, oh, and look, I is just excited. Hiding allows this character in his dialogue to representing the addition to object even to the weak form. If a law is passed throughout the world, permitting the making of any mathematical deduction whatsoever, then the proof of <laughs> alpha does not equal zero fails. Yeah, right. Okay, well, yes. Um, the, uh, the idea of such a law simply gets rid of the entire intuitionistic interpretation of the conditional, since uh, a, a uh, arrow B is supposed to mean from a proof of A, we can get a proof of B, we have a way of doing so, but that would violate the law, so those are conditional we never true. So, okay, right, um, yeah. Okay, um, they're illegal anyway. All right, so what if I argued here, just in a short summary, that a Brauerian theory of free choice sequences could be added to classical mathematics without any constructive doubt to its, to its validity? I have tried to be deliberately informal. Um, I think Brauer was, among other things, hostile to formalization himself, though. I and probably most of us here are not, right? But, uh, uh, right. And this thing's led to interesting formalizations, right? But this, I'm arguing this period, but I myself would have preferred. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Questions, comments, please. Yes, please, Fred. A very simple question. According to the classical perspective of mathematics, the continuum is complete. So if you add new numbers based on choice sequences, where do they fit in? Well, I mean, look. The classical continuum is complete in and of itself, but this shows that in a way, even from a classical point of view, right, um, an interesting extension can be proposed, right? And, well, yeah, it's, it's not, part of the classical continuum so that um, though, uh, you know, because of the results of Vandalinotics, actually we can uh, try and map this into the classical continuum. Uh, uh, if you've got schema and all that, right? But, um, uh, but, um, yeah, um, this shows that, in a way, from a certain point of view, it can be regarded as having an extra completion. Of course, in the, uh, in the restrictive way where I thought about it, it isn't uh, an extension of the continuum, but, well, it still contains some type of it. It only contains the definable numbers, right, if you don't throw the whole classical continuum in one go, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, so thank you for your talk. I, I have an informative question. Um, 
uh, you so you want to accept free choice sequences in a classical setting, uh, but uh, you you also mentioned that you want to change the um, your, your reading of the connectives uh, when talking about free choice sequences will not be the classical one. That's right. Um, so does this mean that uh, I mean there's a very common conception about classical mathematics that it has one underlying logic and then all the rest is actions on top of that. But well, that's not your conception of classical mathematics, I guess. Because then there would be only one word. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't like so much to talk about uh, alternative logics, but I mean, that's not my conception, right? Of classical mathematics and classical, I mean, you know, look, even on the restricted effectiveness uh, interpretation, right? The, you know, the traditional intuitionism, I, I think it all makes sense, right? You know, uh, myself, even though I accept classical mathematics, right? But, okay, but if we're including classical mathematics, yeah, there's no reason why you can't add you connectives with their own special interpretation, right? Okay, right. I mean, modal, you know, <coughs> knowledge and kind of things that uh, Professor Arvin was talking about, right? I mean, uh, I'm certainly not the one to regard those as excluded just because of uh, other work of mine, right? Yeah. The gentleman over there. Hi. I've done work on models using topos theory and stuff like which extend Beth models and yes. Kripke models. Yes. And that, that's what I have been to. I'm That's tempted it. to understand your remarks in those terms because in those models you can either classically or constructively create the models and then prove things like fan theorem and bar theorem and also have this extended notion of there are some classical reals but there are also additional space there but that's done by broadening the notion of logic so so in answer to professor trollster's question i would say in those models you see from a broader logic that the that the classical reals are included in a place where you also have some other free choice yes. type reals okay now i'm far from being an expert on this i did I did make some allusion to this when I said, look, you mean classical mathematics from the point of view of category theory, yeah. and I was thinking of these double novels, right? Intuitionism already plays a role in classical mathematics. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking of, so not an expert on the subject, right? It might be that uh, the stuff I'm doing here could be interpreted within that. I uh, just don't really know, you know, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. This was the last question. Uh, Professor Kripke, once more, thank you very much for this very, very interesting.